think Bob did a great summary of what the book is about, but I tried to go through and take, um, first to look at who is producing these weapons, who are the companies, um, where are they being used, and what's amazing is that the American public, pretty much <coughs> unaware how we are using these weapons, where we are using these weapons, and so I go through and look at the countries where we are using the drones, number one being Pakistan. Who are the victims? How many drone strikes? Well, you're not gonna get this by reading the New York Times and you're not gonna get it reading the Washington <coughs> Post. Um, you're really going to get it by uh, talking to journalists who have dedicated their lives to trying to check and double check with local people in northern Pakistan what is going on because Western journalists just are not there. And the other thing I tried to do is uh, humanize the victims. Because we don't see them on our TV screens, because we don't see pictures in our newspapers, I think the American people feel no compassion towards the people we're killing. And uh, since our government, uh, either uh, until recently, has denied we even have a drone program, uh, and now has said that anybody they kill is a militant, so why should you worry about it? Uh, well, you should worry about it because the government is lying to us. So in the book, I have a chapter that uh, humanizes a number of these drone victims talks about in Pakistan alone how about 3,000 people have been killed, and how can you just blanketly <coughs> label these people militants? Well, now we know from the New York Times piece that came out on May 29th that uh, detailed President Obama's kill list that they make up on the Terror Tuesdays when they meet at the White House, um, that they have used semantics to say that any male of military age living in the area where the U.S. is killing people is a militant. <laughs> so of course you hear 20 militants killed with this strike, 15 militants killed here. Uh, our friend who is a lawyer who's become the lawyer for the victims of drone uh, attacks says that he thinks that perhaps 170 of the people who have been killed are indeed militants. Uh, meaning they are trying to get themselves into Afghanistan and kill U.S. soldiers. Now, we would say they want to kill U.S. soldiers because they feel U.S. soldiers are occupying uh, their uh, area and shouldn't be there. But in any case, he says of the 3,000 people, he would label uh, the vast majority of them innocent people. They might be sympathizers of the Taliban. They might be people who have beards. They might be people who have turbans. They might be people who carry guns because most of the people, uh, the men in northern Pakistan carry guns. And the same is now true in Yemen where we are launching so many of these attacks. But it doesn't mean that they are militants out to get uh, Americans. And so uh, I uh, talk about a lot of the victims in that chapter. I talk about a chapter on the pilots. Who are they? How are they feeling about their jobs? Uh, and I go into a chapter that looks on the legal issues. Who says we have the right to do this? Well, certainly not international law. Certainly not Geneva Conventions. And not even US law. Because the Obama administration says that um, it was given carte blanche to go attack people um, who attacked us on 9-11, given the authorization for the use of force that Congress passed right after 9-11. Well, it specifically said in that authorization for the use of force that it was for people who were involved in the attack on 9-11. Well, most of the people that we are attacking now were maybe 10 years old uh, at the time of 9-11. And many of the organizations, like in Yemen, didn't even exist at the time of 11. So that is certainly a violation of US law. And then I talk about the, what I consider just astounding, uh, that the Obama administration thinks it has the right, legally, to attack US citizens living overseas 
uh, whom the U.S., uh, well, the Obama administration, probably on those Terror Tuesdays in the White House, uh, decides should be on the kill list. Uh, and then, as, as Robert says, uh, I do spend quite a, uh, uh, the last part of the book um, looking at alternatives, because I feel that as an activist, uh, my job is not to get people really bummed out, scared to death about where we're going in this uh, crazy drone warfare, um, but to get you just mad enough that when it gets to the part of here are things we can do, that people will get excited about getting involved in this. And so I hope that part of the discussion that we have today is uh, some of the uh, ways that people are already involved and what are new ideas that some of you might have about how we can turn around public opinion because that's, I think, a critical thing that we do. Uh, it is amazing to me that after 10 years of war in Afghanistan, finally we have a poll saying that seven out of 10 Americans think that war is just not worth fighting and that it includes a majority of Republicans. But on the other hand, we have polls that show that eight out of 10 Americans think killing uh, drone subs, uh, terrorist suspects with drones is just fine and dandy, and that includes a majority of, of Democrats and a majority of people who consider themselves liberal Democrats. How anybody can consider themselves a liberal Democrat and support the murder on a massive scale of innocent people through these drone strikes kind of reminds me of that song, Love Me, Love Me, Love Me, I'm a Liberal, that some of you might remember from the Vietnam days that shows the amazing contradictions that people who call themselves liberals can find themselves in. We have to turn the statistics around so that the majority of American people are on a par with the majority of people around the world. Uh, because just last week, Pew conducted a poll that asked people, what do you think of the US drone strikes? And they looked at 22 different countries. Uh, the U.S. and the U.K. were the only countries where a majority of people said it was just fine. The rest of the world was absolutely appalled. And when you look at places like Egypt, Jordan, even Greece, it was 9 out of 10 people were uh, wildly, vehemently opposed to the U.S. drone program. So what we have to do is get the American people in line with the rest of the world that recognize is how barbaric it is to kill people by remote control.